Hi everybody, it's Claudia from Create with Claudia. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today we're going to be doing something really fun. We're going to be making a full-size quilt by turning a stack of 10-inch pre-cuts, and I have these gorgeous ones I'll tell you about, plus some fabric yardage, and we're going to make a whole quilt top. So stick around. So if you subscribe to my channel or watch a lot of my videos, you'll know that I am an Island Boutique Ambassador, which has been such an honor, and this is my second year doing the project. Uh, one of the things they always send us are some pre-cuts. They send us strip sets and they send us 10-inch pre-cuts. And sometimes I'm not quite sure what to do with the pre-cuts. I love to come up with new projects. And this one, I just, as soon as I saw this pre-cut, these are 10-inch pre-cuts. Um, it's a stack of 10-inch pre-cuts. They are, it's called Woodcut Blossoms. It was designed by Kathy Engel for Heidi Pridemore of the Whimsical Workshop. And I'm going to show you some pictures because this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to shake it at the camera. It is so pretty. This whole line of fabric, the purples and the blues, and there's some white and creams in there. And I knew right away that I wanted to make a quilt with that. And I actually have somebody in mind that I'm going to be giving this to. So what I'm doing today, and you will see, is an entire quilt. We're going to be making a whole quilt. I'll, I'll be skipping along ahead in quite a few sections. But basically, all you need is one of those stacks, of 10-inch stacks of uh, fabric, any fabrics you want. And I know, let's face it, let's be honest, everybody, uh, when you go to the quilt store, sometimes it's really hard to resist those. Uh, and I, my guess is you, like me, probably have one or two sitting on your shelf somewhere. But uh, like I said, this, I had to show off this fabric. And then just a few yards of fabric, of background fabric, and I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using sort of off-white squares of different types, sort of a low volume background, and we will be making a gorgeous quilt. So uh, let me adjust the camera a little bit. I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing, and believe me, this is a really easy quilt pattern to make too. Okay, so I'm back. A couple days have elapsed in between when I uh, f filmed the introduction and this part. But I wanted to give you all of the measurements. Today we're going to be making a 72 by 72 inch quilt, which is a nice big size. It's a nice large lap size, even a double, uh, excuse me, a twin size, um, but it's square. You need 64 blocks in total, and the blocks unfinished are going to measure nine and a half inches. So when they're finished, they're nine inches, and they are all half square triangles. This pattern is so easy to make and you can play with the half square triangles. You don't have to use the layout I'm showing you. In fact, I'll show you a little quick time lapse video of a few different layouts uh, because it's just, it's lots of fun to play with the half square triangles. So to make this quilt top, the 72 by 72 inch top with half square triangles, you need the following. You need one pack of 10 inch squares. It's usually pre-cut. They come pre-cut. They're usually 40 in each pack. You'll need one of those and you will have some extra, so that's always fun to do. Um, and then you're gonna need about two and a half yards of, of background fabric. So when I'm saying background fabric, in my case, it's that white or the paler background fabric. So what worked out really well for me was my pre-cuts actually had some whites in them. So I could use those, pull those out of there, and I still had enough to make this entire top. And that's the Woodcut Blossoms uh, pack that I got from Island Batique. Just beautiful, all those purples. So I had a lot of fun working with this one. For my background fabrics, I have a lot of scraps of batiks. So I use those first and I cut them all into 10 inch squares. So you're gonna need the following of the sort of darker, I, I'm gonna say darker fabric, but it isn't necessarily darker fabric. I'm gonna say the focal fabric. Why don't we say it that way? In my case, all those purples and blues. You need, you'll need 10 inch squares and you need 32 of them, okay? And then of the background fabric, in my case, that light, the white, or whatever you want to use, I need 32 10-inch squares. So you're going to cut those. Well, the, the pre-cuts are cut, so that makes it very easy. But the two and a half yards you're going to need to cut into squares that are 10 inches. And then we're going to make half square triangles out of them. And I'm going to show you that in a second. All right, so you have your 32 squares of your focal or your purple or whatever color you're using fabrics, your various fabrics from that pre-cut pack, and then you have your background fabrics. Now, what you wanna do is take the lighter of the two squares of the two piles, in my case, I'm using the, the background fabric. You're going to draw a diagonal line. Basically what we're doing with all of these squares, just pretend there's 32 of each in these piles, is we're gonna be pairing them up 
a background with a focal fabric, and we're making half square triangles. So we're, I'm gonna show you how to make one of them, and then you're gonna pair up all 32 of those squares, and you're gonna end up, and I'll show you, because you're gonna split those in half, you're gonna end up with 64 blocks. So let's get started. So on the lighter of the two squares, you're gonna draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. And I'm just gonna use a pencil. I'll try to do it dark so you can see it. Normally I would not use a pencil. I would use a water soluble marker. And I also wouldn't make it that dark. But there you can see, there's my, my line. Now this is my sewing guide. And now you're gonna put these fabrics right sides together line them up so they're nice and even because this is the tricky part and it's only tricky normally if you watch my videos you know when I make half square triangles I like a lot of wiggle room in this case I wanted a nine inch finished block so you want to be real precise with your sewing here what you're going to do is you are going to sew a quarter inch on the right, on both down both sides of that line. So there's your sewing guide, and you're going to take your sewing machine and you're going to sew a quarter inch down this side and a quarter inch down this side. You definitely want to be careful with that. Um, you do not have a lot of wiggle room when we trim these down, so you want to make sure you you sew that really try to sew that really accurately. So I'm going to do that really quickly, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. Alrighty, so here we go. You can see, hopefully, let me hold it up a little bit closer to the camera. You can see where I, there's my drawn line. Let me get a seam ripper so you can see. There's my drawn line and there are my two seams along each side, quarter inch and a quarter inch. So the next thing you want to do is not drop your seam ripper like I just did, <laughs> but um, you're gonna take your ruler and on the drawn line, you're gonna cut these in half with your rotary cutter. Don't cut through the seams or anything, just cut right on that drawn line. And there you go. You still have a little bit to go because these aren't quite the right size that we want. See how pretty they are? So there's your half square triangle. Now, what I did is I already did most of these and I chain pieced them because it goes, it makes really fast sewing. You'd be surprised how quickly these go together. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take these over to my pressing service. And in my case, for all 64 half square triangles, because you're gonna have 64 of these once you're done after you've split them, is you're gonna press, I press to the dark side. Alrighty, so here we go. Here's one that's nicely pressed. It's not quite done yet. It's not quite nine and a half inches. It's a little bit larger, so we need to trim it down. So you want your nice big square ruler. I can't recommend these big ones enough. This one's 15 inches square. And you know, I love this ruler. <laughs> it's uh, you, If you've watched my videos, you know I use it a lot. But you want it that it has a diagonal line. The first thing we're gonna do is even off one edge. Whoops. You're gonna line up that diagonal line on your ruler with your diagonal seam, and you're gonna go as far as you can over to this corner, because you're gonna trim that really carefully, and you wanna give yourself a lot of room. You can see it is almost nine and a half inches. If you look here, it actually is, wow, I'm just kinda of surprised. Usually it's a little bit off. Um, surprised myself there. Let me just see how much more I can trim off a little bit more. There we go, that just gives me, see how tight it is? You really gotta watch your sewing on this. And now you're gonna trim off this edge. And 
in this edge. So there you go. You can see not much trimming either. And then you're going to flip it around and you're going to find on your ruler that nine and a half inch marker here where it matches, meets that diagonal line. And you're going to put that right there on the corner. And the way you know you have it right is it's going to line up along here at the nine and a half inch mark, along here at the nine and a half inch mark, and then along that diagonal line. Whoops, and I just knocked it out of place. The trimming is the pain, and I will tell you it's a lot of trimming. I would suggest you put on your favorite playlist um, and just have some fun, listen to a good album, and just, I would make them all first, press them, and then just sit and trim them up. And then you're gonna trim this side. See, like I said, wow, that was, that's a very close one. But you get rid of those little dog ears and everything. And there is my nine and a half inch half square triangle ready to go into this quilt that I'm making. And you're gonna do that again with all 64 half square triangles. So I have all my half square triangles done already. In fact, I've had them all trimmed. I even have them up on my design wall. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is a little fast forward of how I played with them on my design wall. If you don't have a design wall, it's no problem. Just lay them out on a big surface. You do need a big surface for this. And you can play with them every which way you want. I think I laid it out three or four different, I think the first one is sort of an abstract layout. And then I made them all one direction, which I really liked. And then I, played around with a little bit and I ended up with the star in the middle. You'll see how it looks. So take a look at this. It's a sort of a quick uh, time lapse of how I did that. So here's the final layout. This is the uh, layout that I'm happy with for this quilt. So now I'm going to start sewing it together. And the way I sew it together is row by row. So I'm going to start on the top row and work my way down. That'll help me keep organized. And the next thing I do is always what I do in the top left of each row. I'll put a pin and I'll put a piece of paper with the number of the row written on it so I can keep track of what I'm doing. But I sew row by row, press it, and I'll put it back up there just to make sure that I'm sewing it in the right way. So I mentioned just a second ago how I label my rows, and I just wanted to show you that really quickly. I just get a piece of scrap paper and I number them one through however many rows I have. This quilt is best, for, in my opinion, sewn together in rows. That'll keep it organized and you know your angle, your half square triangles will be placed correctly. And then the way I've always done it, for me, it's just the easiest way, is here's the top left. I put my pin in the top left corner, so I know that's the top left of the row. And then I go across the row, and I put them in the same direction. So this would be the top left of the second block in the row. This is the top left of the third block, top left of the fourth block, and so on until I do all. And then what I do is I make a really careful um, sewing strategy. I'll sew the first two together and you can kind of see how they, they look and that's right. Sew those together, right sides together using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then for the next pair, I will put in another pin just so I know that's the left because it's really easy. Let's say you step away to get lunch or whatever and somebody comes in and plays with them or whatever, you know, or you have to step away for a couple days, you might forget where you are. That's why I like to put my pin in the top left. 
whatever way you organize is best for you. And then what I do is after I show, sew these pairs together, you'll see, then I know that this is the second one and it'll match up. Let's say these are sewn. It'll match up with this one and that'll still be my top left. So you can sort of see where that's coming together. So that's how I stay organized when I sew my rows together and I sew each row individually and um, then I'll press them. I will probably press each row to one side. So like the top row I'll press to the left, second row I'll press to the right. So now I'm going to go ahead and have some fun and start sewing these rows. And I will do them all in one stretch just to, to knock them out. Um, that's how I like to do it. It just makes it quick and easy. This is a very easy quilt to sew together. I'm back. I got my quilt back from my long arm quilter. I will show you a couple snippets close up just so you can see her beautiful work. Just absolutely love the way this turned out. We chose sort of a purple or plum colored thread to use throughout it. This is my super easy quilt. I hope you give it a try. It's one stack of 10 inch pre-cuts. You can get it at the, your local quilt shop. I used again the Whimsical Workshops. Um, this is called Woodcut Blossoms by Island Batik. Absolutely gorgeous purples and plums, some blues, some fuchsias. I just, I love this color collection. For the background or the white parts, I used about two and three quarters to three, three uh, yards of fabric. Uh, that measurement, of course, does not include the backing of the, the quilt. I used just a simple gray for the backing, so you can see it here, hopefully. And I, but here it is. It measures 72 inches by 72 inches. It couldn't be easier. It's just a really fun, easy quilt to make. And boy, does that center star, I think, really pack a punch. And it makes for a great, bold, and graphic design. I really hope you give this quilt pattern a try and do me a favor, uh, let me know in the comments if you're going to try it and also what colors you're going to be using, what kind of fabric you're going to be using. And if you post to social media, make sure to tag me, hashtag create with Claudia. That way I can see all of your gorgeous quilts and see how pretty they look in all the different colors and fabrics you decide to use. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell. That way you get notified whenever I post a new video. I do lots of free quilt patterns, lots of smaller projects. I do lots of tips, all kinds of tutorials. So I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.